Hi, this is Clint from Persuasive Evangelism, and I'm at Lake Sacagawea right now. Uh, it's been raining off and on, pouring rain, and then the sun comes out, and then it rains, and now it's sunny again. So I'm going to try to do this before it starts raining again. So today I'm going to talk about uh, undesigned coincidences in the Bible. I found this topic really fascinating, it, um, and I found this book about it. Uh, Hidden in Plain View by Lydia McGrew. Uh, so if you find this, want to get more details on this, um, this is the book to pick up. It's really interesting. It's And it goes over a lot of the undesigned coincidences in the Bible. So let's get started. We brought a little chair here to sit on. All right. All right, so, all right, uh, that's the Longview Community Church behind me. Um, I go to that church, so it's a uh, Gothic structure, neo-Gothic. Uh, so the definition of an undesigned coincidence is, um, it's the definition I got from this book. It's an undesigned coincidence is a notable connection between two or more accounts or texts that doesn't seem to have been planned by the person or people giving the accounts. Despite their apparent independence, the items fit together like pieces of a puzzle. Uh, that provides reason to believe that statements that contribute to it are truthful. So the undesigned coincidences between the gospels, between the letters of Paul and, and Acts, uh, there's all these undesigned coincidences so it gives it more authenticity if it was just if they were all collaborating it would be just all the main points but um you have all these little details that all fit together um the undesigned coincidences first came up by uh william H haley um in the 1700s he he talked about that um and he published a book about it in 1790 and it's con and it's considered a classical apologetics argument that's uh, gotten more popular again recently. I've heard a lot of uh, Christian teachers, apologists talk about the undesigned coincidences. Um, I first heard of it a couple years ago by uh, J. Warner Wallace. Uh, he's He was a cold case detective in LA. He was an atheist and he would review old cold cases, review the testimonies and uh, try to find the truth and to solve the cases. So he decided to do that analytics on the Gospels and he found all these undesigned coincidences similar to uh, people's testimonies because uh, people would, people um, basically said, you know, if there's two people in the same room, they might give different details as they're describing what happened based on their location or just the type of person they are. Some pe people might notice uh, you know, the type of clothing someone's wearing or someone else might notice something else. So then you get all these details and then you put it together to find um, the truth. Um, in his book, uh, and that's how I became a Christian too, by analyzing all the Bible and finding that mm, this looks like it's true, authentic. It didn't look like, you know, people were collaborating, putting it all together. Uh, in his book I read um, is Cold Case Christianity. Uh, I would I, I'd totally recommend that book. He goes over some of the undesigned coincidences as well as other things um, that he researched that, that basically the evidence that brought him to Christ. Um, one that he brings up in, and look him up in YouTube. He has a lot of YouTube uh, videos and so on. Uh, the one that he brings up in some of his talks is uh, Matthew 26, 67, 68. He's, um, basically when uh, Judas betrayed Jesus and they've captured Jesus um, this verse says then they spit in his face and struck him and some slapped him saying prophesy to us Christ who is that that struck you and then that that adds a question you know they tied him up but why can't Jesus see who's you know hitting him you know why are they saying prophesy who so that leaves a question in that in Matthew but then you go to Luke and it talk um, it records the events of that same 
uh, situation, but he gives a couple different details. He says, now the men they were holding Jesus in custody were they're making him as they they were uh, mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesize, who is that that struck you? So that gives a detail that um, Matthew didn't have that they had blindfolded him. So Matthew described the same event, but didn't mention that they had blindfolded him, but they, they were still asking, you know, who struck you? So that's an undesigned coincidence um, that Jay Warner Wallace goes, um, talks about. So I'm gonna go over four undesigned coincidences in this book. If you're interested in it, get this book. There's lots of them in here and she explains it very well into detail. And um, there's, there's, there's a lot in here, but she says there's even more that she didn't include. So it, the, the gospels, the four gospels, all, uh, and the letters of Paul and Acts, they're chock full of undesigned coincidences. So the first one we're gonna go over is um, with Jesus and Pilate. Uh, Jesus says, uh, Jesus is captured, you just already betrayed him, and he's brought in front of Pilate. And then in Luke 23, one through four, it says, then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him saying, we found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, you have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. So basically, you know, Jesus says, if you said, um, you have said so, um, and then why is Pilate, that gives, leads to a question, why is Pilate basically saying, I find no guilt in him, because um, from this it says, they're accusing him of saying he's a king, and then Jesus basically says, if you have said so, so why does then Pilate say, I find no guilt in this man? Well. Then if you go to John 18, 36, so we just read Luke 23, one through four. So then a different gospel, John 18, 36, describes the same um, situation, same event, but he gives, a, he, kind of, he gives a little more details expanding on the conversation between uh, Jesus and Pilate. So he, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from the world. So he gives a little more details, basically saying he's a king, but not of this world. So Pilate was probably thinking, you know, maybe he's delusional. He thinks he's the kingdom of something outside of this world. So, so then that explains why um, in Luke, uh, Pilate told everyone, I find no guilt in this man. So those are two undesigned coincidences that you put it together, it all makes sense. All right, so the undesigned coincidence part two is Herod talking with his servants. So if you go to Matthew 14, one through two, um, Herod, he's talking, it says, at, the, at that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard about the fame of Jesus and said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why those miraculous powers are at work in him. So in that verse, it says, Herod uh, he, Herod said this to his servants. So, you know, and then the story continues. But then if you go to Luke, Luke uh, mentions a, uh, another fact that um, basically later on, it's not about the same scene, but Luke talk, is just giving a list of, um, you know, Jesus' apostles and then some of the women that also follow Jesus. So if you go to Luke 8, 3, and then it says, And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna and many others who provided for them out of their means. Um, so they're basically saying one of Jesus' followers was Joanna, uh, the wife of Chusa, who was Herod's household manager. So then that ties it to the Matthew verses where it says Herod's talking to his servants. So that's that gives connects it all together. So one of Herod's main servants was a follower of Christ, her the husband. Um, so then that gives um, connects it how Matthew could write down what Herod was saying. Basically, the um, 
Herod's manager was there and then told Matthew what Herod was saying. So that's an undesigned coincidence. Undesigned coincidence number three um, about lots of people. So this is about um, Jesus feeding the 5,000 right before he does it. Uh, if you go to Mark 6, 30 to 31, uh, it says, the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest for a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. So that, why were all these people coming and going? It, Mark doesn't explain it, but, um, and they didn't, they had no leisure even to eat. So there was just tons of crowds coming and going. So they weren't staying with Jesus, but they were coming and going. Um, but then if you go to John 6, 4, um, John describes the same uh, about the feeding the 5,000. And John gives this additional fact. It says, now the Passover, the feast of the Jews was at hand. So one of the biggest Jewish holidays was about to start. So that's why the crowds were coming and going. They were getting ready, getting their supplies, get preparing for the, one of the biggest uh, celebrations of the Jews. So that explains um, the Mark verse about people coming and going. It was actually, Passover was about to be here. And then the a fourth undesigned coincidence that we're going to talk about is actually about the same story. It's about Philip. So it's about um, feeding the 5,000. Uh, so if you go to John 6, 5, it says, uh, Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that the large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? So why is Jesus asking Philip where they should buy bread? He wasn't, he was an apostle, but he wasn't one of the main apostles. Why didn't he ask Peter or John or James? But he asked uh, Philip. Now, if you go to John 1, 43 to 44, um, the very beginning of John, when Jesus is calling his apostles, uh, John 1, 43 to 44, it says, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So it says Philip's from Bethsaida. Um, but still, why in John 6, 5, uh, it doesn't explain why uh, John is asking Philip. All right, I stopped it for a second because of the siren. Um, so in John 6, 5, uh, Jesus is asking Philip where to buy bread. It says they're by Galilee, but why is he asking him out of all the disciples? In John 1, 43, 44, it says the next, it says that Philip came from Bethsaida. Um, but still, why is he asking? Because in John 6, 5, it doesn't say where they're at, just generally near Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. But then if you go to Luke 9, 10, um, about talking about the feeding of the 5,000. Luke says, on their return, the apostles told him all they had done, and he took them and withdrew apart to a town called Bethsaida. Now, in Luke doesn't mention the conversation Jesus had with Philip asking to buy food. He just mentions that they were near, they were near the town of Bethsaida. So these are all the little facts. So uh, if you put them all together, then you understand, okay, so they were, in Luke, it says they were near the town of Bethsaida, and then John 6, 5, it records Jesus asking Philip, you know, where could they buy bread? He's asking him because he is from Bethsaida. And Luke confirms that they're at Bethsaida. And then um, John 1, 43 to 44 um, confirms that Philip is from Bethsaida. And then Luke, John 6, 5, that's why Jesus is asking him you know, where to buy bread. And then Luke confirms, you know, that that's where they're at. So if you put all three of those verses together um, from two different gospels, that puts it all together. So I like that in design coincidence, but the Bible or the New Testament is full of all these undesigned coincidences. Um, I totally recommend if, if you think this is interesting um, to get this book hidden in plain view. Also you could get by Lydia McGrew. Also if, um, 
Cold Case Christianity by J. Warner Wallace, but this one is, gets into all the details about undesigned coincidences. So that's all today. It stayed sunny, so it doesn't look like it's going to rain for a while. Anyways, take care, everyone. God bless.